time to take climate change seriously and international visitors should stay home and watch the Rugby World Cup on TV. Retired academic John Robinson has warned a seminar in Wellington that the forecasts of the numbers of tourists are overblown and considering a probable further downturn in 2012 and rising oil prices, the country's tourism industry is seriously under threat. And Dr Robinson joins us now. Welcome to Checkpoint. Good evening. We are told that tourism is our largest export sector, contributes $18.6 billion to the economy each year. So it's, it's hard to give it up. Exactly, and we better take it very seriously. At the moment, we're a hypocrite nation. On the one hand, we say we're clean, green, and worried about the environment and sign up Kyoto, and we're going to worry about greenhouse gas emissions. On the other hand, the greenhouse gas emissions from energy have gone up by 70% since we signed Kyoto. So our actions are exactly the opposite of those um, wishes. We have to make a choice here, and if the choice is to save the planet, we may have to cut some jobs and deal with that. Or we can just continue doing what we're doing at the moment. Nobody seems to care, and if we're hypocrites, it certainly doesn't put off the tourists. Well, I think it's the wrong way to go. I think we should be concerned. The concerns of many of us date back at least 40 years when these um, problems were raised, They've been forecast for a very, very long time, and we're heading for a complete storm in about 20 years, in 2030, globally, when all sorts of problems come to a head. Uh, we should stop ignoring them, and at the very least, we should be debating them very openly. How would we replace $18.6 billion? If it wasn't tourism, what do we do instead? Uh, we have to reorganise our economy in a big way. I'd prefer not to minimise the problem, not to pretend that something doesn't need to be done. But remember that we're six years into an oil peak and very soon we won't have oil supplies available and they'll be even more expensive than they are now. So the day of the car is numbered and we have a huge industry there in dealing with cars. So that's another sector we have to deal with. Um, the free market won't deal with that at all if we're going to keep everybody usefully enjoy, employed and uh, make sure everybody has enough money to live on. If we do that, we'll find we have enough. We just have to cut our standard of living a bit, live a bit differently and look after one another. And which political party do you think would be elected on that kind of platform? At the moment, none whatsoever. There's no political party who's come really strongly out on that full message. In fact, um, a lot of environmental groups want to have nothing to do with a group of us who want to pull these issues to the forefront. For example, we're talking about population. The world is overpopulated. We should play our part in reducing our population. But many, many people just don't want to talk about it. The first thing we have to do is to be ready to talk openly about these problems Thank you very much. That is Dr. Ro Dr. John Robinson, a retired academic and an economic forecaster.